welcome to the Starsology Astrology Podcast. I'm your host, Alison Price, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Arwen O'Neill. Hi, Alison. It's great to be here. So nice to have you once more. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about Imbolc, yeah. which is a one of the pagan festivals on the Wheel of the Year. And we're going to be particularly looking at the Imbolc 2024 chart, because we can. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it is, where it comes from, and why we care. Yeah. And then we've got some other, other thoughts on it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically, the Wheel of the Year is, is following the sun cycle from the winter solstice at Capricorn. Um, when the sun, it goes through Capricorn, then it goes through the first 15, um, it goes through the first 15 degrees of Aquarius. And when it gets to 15 degrees Aquarius, yeah. that is when the cross quarter day of in bulk occurs. Yes. Now, this year, 2024, it's going to be on February the 4th, although in bulk is frequently celebrated either on the 1st or the 2nd of February. Yes. So it's one of those days because it's part of the pagan year, and of course you can do what you like, yep. but as you're an astrologer, you need to know that it's actually on February the 4th. Right, because that's Aquarius 15th. Yeah, so that's one-eighth of the chart from the conception yep. at the zero um, Capricorn. And it's exactly halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. That's correct. Yeah. So we're that's why so in bulk occurs on as the sun enters fifteen yeah. for that period. Um it's about six weeks technically. Yeah. Um give or take. It, it, we're flexible. But it's part of the cycle of the as the sun as it's going through the actual signs. Yeah. So um in bulk is actually um it's one it's been one of those um festivals that's been around for since you know year zero yeah call it what you will the romans knew it as well but um after 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 the birth of christ it, it became part of the candle mass yes. uh, date which is uh, february the 4th and this is where the technically it was the purification of mary after 40 days after the birth yeah they go the women go to the church and they're purified and allowed back into the congregation because oh, well, they're all, that nice? because they're yes i know <laughs> because they're purified from all the products of birth which are takes 40 days does it gallons of yes it does yeah. so anyway wow. so even today uh, women will stay away from church until that time after a birth really because they're unclean yes so anyway because they can well yeah <laughs> whatever so anyway so there are mul multiple <laughs> multiple reasons for this date and yeah. it's like almost um, we've got past the worst of the winter yes we've got past the worst of the birth basically and we are now saying okay woman you yeah. can get back on get back on with it it's funny so. my my best friend who is a taurus is always saying well now that christmas is over it's almost spring and i'm like no it isn't we've got an entire winter to go but she's you know technically right mythologically she's right yeah. she's speaking from the, the the eons hence where they were yes. like okay christmas is over now the days are getting longer we are it's just a downwards you know sort of slope yes. to we're just yeah, well, this easy. is the halfway mark of winter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually have noticed days getting a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So one of the women associated with in bulk is St. Brigitte. It can also be Bridget, mm -hmm. Brigitta, and St. Bride. Yes. Um, and she's also sometimes referred to as a goddess, which is super convenient for us. Absolutely. And um, the idea is that um, at this time when it's St. Brigid's Day, you take your last corn that's been there in your winter stores and you make yourself a corn dolly with the last and you fold it over and you make these corn dollies and whatnot. Yeah. And you place it outside your door because they believe that she walks the in the night of, on the, on this date of the 4th yeah. of February and you welcome her in because then your harvest of your wheat yeah. will be good for the new year because this is a time where people are running out of stores they're running out of meat they're running out of grain they're trying to get through the winter and this can be the leanest leanest time of the year before the spring actually comes yeah and this is before they even had credit cards to max out over christmas <laughs> <laughs> exactly and we are yes and we are still going through the leanest thing because you're thinking that can't be my visa account what on earth happened there and it's oh. lean it's still lean today january be january yeah, yeah. so in bulk period of this six weeks is a lean time yeah. for your reserves your stores yeah. and what you've got stashed in your pantry or your bank account yeah. and, and until the spring comes in march sorry march 21st we we are in this lean period of inbox so we are trying to husband or keep a good grip on our wheat our bread is getting tired the beans are running out and all the rest of it yeah but these 
uh, symbolic women are there are many there are many stories that go with it and i think you have one as well right absolutely and this is really interesting because what you're talking about is called Brig- brigade's cross mm. and these are made out of straw they 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 Mm-hmm. And then it crosses, mm-hmm. and if you just search Brigades Cross, you'll see what we're talking about. It's just a little, you know. Yeah, I'll put an image on the blog post. Yeah, yeah, it, it's neat. Um, and this actually corresponds with, we can talk more about spring goddesses later in the year, yes. but, but this is these little straw figures that sort of are, are very prevalent in a lot of different cultures. And one of the one of the interesting tie-ins that I see, like no pun intended, haha, is <laughs> with Marzana, who is one of the Baltic goddesses of the spring this is definitely a march goddess we can talk more about it later but uh but effigies creating little effigies yes. of straw dressing them up as the goddess sometimes setting them on fire and throwing them into a body of water yes. that's not what you would do with this one with this one you put it on the door but creating little straw effigies is is definitely yes. you know to celebrate that hold yeah. hold me over hold me over yeah. Yeah. yeah these little rituals and it's interesting because brigitte is a Celtic goddess, clearly from from the name, you can you can <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> right. But uh, her name means high one or exalted one. In uh, it's this Proto Celtic, the word briganti apparently. Yes. And the origin of the popular name Bridget or Brigitte. Yes. Which Bridget. is a lovely, wonderful name. One of the most beautiful women in the entire world, Bridget Bardot, obviously. Exactly. I mean, literally one of the most like top three, I think, in history from when we have photos <laughs> but anyways <laughs> so the goddess of the wells was what she was known as the goddess of uh waterways she's uh full of contradictions though Did you she's say the goddess of the well the water the well. wells and waterways yeah okay she's also a goddess of healing of fertility of motherhood yes. passion and fire so there's you know they had no trouble with like these contradictions back then it wasn't just oh we have one goddess who's like the, the fire goddess, one goddess who's like the fertility. No, no, no. She's fertility. She's motherhood. She's healing. She's passion. She's fire. Yes. All of this stuff. And she was worshipped throughout Ireland. Very important with protecting mothers and newborn uh, children. And she inspired many writers and poets. So she is considered also a goddess of poetry. And weirdly, a goddess of smithing. I'm going to say it again. Smithing. Define. So when you smith something, you uh, smelt, I guess. It oh, like a blacksmith. Correct. Yes. Okay. So she's the goddess of smiths. Smiths. Smith, smithing. So if your name is Bridget Smith, you're right on track. Yes, very much on brand. <laughs> very much, yes. So goddess of, and, and also like this brings in innovation and invention. So yes. fire, passion, poetry, invention, which is pretty cool. It is, it is. Yeah. And interestingly, the reason that I am slightly familiar with this goddess is because she's also associated with lamentation and keening for the dead and this is reflected in her goddess of life and death sort of status these goddesses ended up encompassing a a great deal of contradictions as we say but one of the interesting things that happened and i want to say back in the 1700s before when when slavery was happening in the u.s okay past past the time when slavery would have stopped happening in britain Mm -hmm. because they abolished it like long before the U.S. did, what they didn't abolish was indentured servitude. And a lot of people who came from Ireland were so destitute that they actually sold themselves basically into slavery or indentured servitude to the United States. Right. So they were an underclass that was just barely above the slave class that was coming from Africa. Right. And there was this kinship that occurred in some places, especially in the South, especially in New Orleans. Mm. And so we have this one goddess who you will find at the top of our blog post. And the reason for her is that we believe, because it's all oral tradition, and blah, 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 mm-hmm. um, that Maman Brigitte was, she was the consort to Baron Samadhi, who is this top hat wearing sort of caricature of a voodoo priest. Right. And he had this consort who is this fiery red haired, beautiful white woman and they would sort of party in the graveyards and they protected the tombs that were that had crosses on them and and only those so basically it was like a kind of pay to play they 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 caroused they swore they drank they drank uh, spice infused rum and they they smoked cigars and they just were 
like pretty awesome. And actually there is a wonderful characterization of them in, I think season two and three of American gods, which was a really great show and was canceled before its time. But anyway, <laughs> you can find a, a characterization of, of this wonderful, incredibly bizarre, irreverent, you know, irreverent couple in, in American gods in, in, you know, popular culture. And this is a woman who was originally, um, Irish Celtic. Yeah, and, and brought over. And brought over and the traditions rights. come through. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's amazing how these these stories and these, well, not necessarily traditions because we don't do it that like that anymore, but looking back astrologically now, yeah. we can go back and say, ah, oh, this is the, the origin of yeah. these principles. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Very interesting. And, of course, I mean, that's not even getting into the, the adoption of, you know, the goddess Brigitte by... Christians and taking over and turning her into a saint, which is awesome. So she gets turned into a saint in one sense, and then she's also a voodoo consort yeah. slash priestess and a pagan, a pagan goddess as well. So yeah. we'll take that too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So do you have an image of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, based on it... based on um, Melody Mangler, the burlesque dancer from Vancouver. Fantastic. She, so we we'll link yeah. to is that to the Brigitte or Maman Group Brigitte? Maman. Maman. Okay, so yeah. we'll put a link through to that as well. Yeah. And um, so our, our listeners can check it out. Um, some of your goddess artwork as well, which is yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah. So it's your representation of this. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. It's an interesting time of the year because it's like your friend just said, you think spring's on the way, which it is. Yeah. But this is the final gasp. Even though the days are getting longer, yeah. the pantry is getting emptier. Right. And it tends to be like the... At least it, where we are, it does tend to sort of, we don't really have a lot of snowy Christmases in Vancouver, no. um, but we do have really cold, cold, cold January. You've got to have a coat. You've got to have boots. You've got to have yeah. a, a pair of gloves, yeah. double hats at this yeah. point. And most people have put away their Christmas lights, so then it's kind of depressing yes. and dark. And It is. It, it is quite, a, a, what she gets, um, what do you call it, seasonal affective disorder oh, kicks yeah. in at this time because it's been... The winter's already been a long time. Although we've turned the corner, yeah. we are not there yet and we yeah. won't be till we get to the uh, equinox on March 21st. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the chart for Imbolc for 2024. And this is when the sun is, gets to 15 degrees, zero minutes Aquarius. Yeah. And for us, it's going to be on February the 4th. And this is the exact cross-quarter day between the quarter days of the solstice and the equinox. That's why we're going with this. Now, if we look at this chart for 2024, we see that obviously the sun is at 15 degrees um, Aquarius and it's making a couple of aspects, well, three aspects, and that's what we're looking at. Well, four, actually. Um, so there is a square to Uranus, hmm. which we would uh, interpret as uh, challenging coming forward. New things are going to struggle at this point to come forward. So yeah. there may be things in the news as well because it is global. Um, and then we also has a square down to Jupiter, which is also in Taurus. So these 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 will be challenges with growth, and we know that's going to be a case. It's not yeah. always going to be square Jupiter, but it just happens to be this year. Yeah, and so, we're getting news about more, you know, thousands of layoffs at Google and it's, more it's a tough inflation and time. more food costs. You've got up. to tighten your belt and preserve your pantry and yeah. get your get you know beans and rice time, you know. Yeah. As Dave Ramsey would say. <laughs> um, so those are the two challenges that uh, the sun is uh, being under pressure for. Um, fortunately, we then have a sextile to Chiron, which is always a, a very a nice aspect to have. Mm -hmm. It's giving a bit of give and take on understanding um, a little bit more, I want to say, care for those less fortunate, if I'd like yeah. to say it that way, where we are trying to be not sympathetic, empathetic towards others is... Yeah. dilemmas or situations in which they find themselves and we sit here in our ivory towers and think oh well you know at least the heating's on right and it's interesting because one of the things about this this uh, time of year is traditionally it has to do with there is a feast involved with it mm. but it's also about cleaning and and cleaning out your you know things that you don't need anymore for, for it's it's the beginning of the spring cleaning yes. which in in our time now is like you don't just throw things away for god's sake you donate things you donate things so to those who need exactly them. yeah and there are many donation places around our city oh which we take our stuff which we, we do, do. Absolutely. i don't know where the stuff comes from but we still have to do these and this is where you are able to um, consider others at this point because yeah. the sun is sextile to Chiron, which is a 
it's not a dominant aspect, but it's one that you can lean into yeah. if you're very concerned about this at Imbolc. And that will be, as I say, on February the 4th. Yeah, and that's interesting. It's symbolized by the uh, the spark of life, the beginning of spring, the very, very beginning of spring. And this was uh, originally considered the... Um, the start of when the, the very first things would, would push through the snow yes. and the buds of, and, and in Vancouver, we do actually see cherry blossoms in February. Yes. And uh, this was... And snowdrops, that's yeah. that's one plant yeah. that comes first. Yeah, exactly. It was one of the funny things. I, I remember when we had the Olympics here in 2010, was that all of the rest of Canada was in this utter, like, like devastating snow apocalypse. And then Vancouver, it was like, oh, we can see the cherry blossoms already. But yet we're trying to have, like, you know, ski winter skiing. sports yeah so we yeah. had to like have fake snow because like vancouver was just a little too you know awesome and and getting warm already yeah. well i'll check out already. on february the 4th i'll get out there and see, see if i can take they... some photos of these cherry blossoms exactly. in the city because they it's a short-lived uh, cycle but it's an indication of yes we're getting to the end yeah and that's in, indicative of uh embark. yeah i had a friend last year who i was <laughs> we were playing disc golf in the cold of february but there were cherry blossoms and i just i had to pause uh at one of the you know the sixth hole let's say to take a picture of myself like with the cherry blossoms behind me and i was like sorry sorry and i'm trying to catch up and the guy's like well if you're not taking uh, cherry blossom selfies are you even on instagram and i was like exactly <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see what we can do this year see if yeah. we can get some shots of what's what's out and about on the uh, 4th of february because that would be a good thing to see What's in our neck of the woods, yeah, right? It's not just cherry blossoms. Apparently, the first lambs begin to be born. Oh, lambs. Lambs. Okay. Well, yeah. that is the early lambing, definitely. Very early, yeah. Okay. And then the fourth aspect that the sun is receiving is actually a quintile to the moon. I love a quintile. It's creativity and genius. <laughs> we love a quintile. It's um, it's a subtle thing. It's obviously not going to come through strongly on in bulk because of those two squares there. But it's it's once the needs are almost together where you're considering, this would be a time to consider as as those of us who perhaps are privileged to how can you um, attend to needs of others, uh, needs and wants rather than what you want. Yeah. Um, you need to maybe uh, consider what others need, which are, is an entirely different thing. Yeah. So um, and of course, living in the city, we see this around us as well. There's there's a great disparity between wealth and poverty yeah. and that perhaps something can be done. And it's a time as in bulk to consider this, that if your pantry is thin, what goes you down to your last bottle of wine? But no, uh, other people's pantries are thinner yeah. and you need to, consideration has to be given to care for others at this time because the moon is, a, so, is aspecting the sun in in bulk on this year. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so we've had a look at Imbolc. We've decided it's a cross-quarter day, occurring, of course, when the sun is 15 Aquarius. Super important day in the Wheel of the Year. It's an important day for astrology. It's a, it's a time for reflection and consideration. Um, we've spoken about St. Brigitte, Brigida, Bridget. Mama Brigitte. Bride, Mama Brigitte. Yeah. All combinations of that name, Bridget Bardot. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Everyone knows who she is. <laughs> And it's just one of those things that because um, I do enjoy following the cycles of the sun, the natural cycles, and to live in line with them, the, although it's not easy because we live in a city, but if we were living perhaps out in the farms, you'd be more paying attention to these things and your and what was happening. Yeah. Um, but the, the consideration has to be given to it. You can't just, yeah. yeah, you can't just be buying avocados in winter because you, they ship them flight right in. If you were living out on a farm, you wouldn't, you'd have your your last potatoes and, and so on. So this is why I like to follow the wheel of the year. It gives you time to pause and think about how things would be if yeah. we weren't so organized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Arwen, and um, sharing your art with us, your fabulous art for Mama Brigitte. That is fantastic. Thank and um, if our listeners, um, to our listeners, if you found that this was value in this episode, please do share it with others. And you can certainly email us at starsology at gmail.com with any comments about uh, this episode or anything else you want to ask about astrology. Yeah. And um, make sure to check out Arwen's artwork. It, it's super interesting. She is a totally talented artist and oh, it's a pleasure great. to know her. Well, thank you very much. You can find me at misspink.net. Misspink.net and the link is below. Yes. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks so much for getting this far through the episode. 
I just want to take a moment to tell you about the two main options of my astrology services. So the first one is coaching. If you are an aspiring astrologer, and by that I mean someone who's perhaps a hobbyist astrologer or someone who's learning astrology or a student, or you've got a few books and you've been doing it for a while, but perhaps you need a little bit of help to bring it all together, then maybe getting some astrological coaching from me would be the answer for you. The astrology coaching I offer is a one-hour session on Zoom, and it's tailored to answer your particular questions. For example, if you have issues with natal chart readings, we can go there. Or if you're having problems working with your forecasting, we can go there. Or even basic astrology stuff, or even getting yourself organized for your astrology business. The idea is that astrological coaching will answer your particular questions. It's tailored specifically to you and where you are in your astrological journey. And I'm happy to help you out with some guidance about how you can get going, what to focus on and what to dismiss. So that would be the astrological coaching for people trying to learn astrology. The second astrological service I offer is consultations. So this is for someone who perhaps doesn't know anything about astrology, but they just want to have their chart read or get their chart done. Call it what you will. So once more, this is a one hour consultation over Zoom. I will interpret your chart, tell you about the main features, tell you about where the energy is flowing and all the rest of what is entailed in a thorough natal chart interpretation. I can also add in some forecasting in there too, bearing in mind we only have one hour. So just in summary, I've got coaching for people who want to learn astrology and I've got uh, consultations for those who want to get an astrology reading done. I'm Alison Price from Starsology.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.